Hello, Grumpy Gunsmith back with another video for you. Uh, today we're going to talk about ramrods, uh, ramrod tips, and how to taper a ramrod with some simple basic tools. And I'll also show, show you some specialized tools for doing ramrod work too. Uh, if you're doing a lot of guns like I do, uh, these specialized tools will be real handy for you. Um, and I will put a link at the bottom of the video as to where you can get these specialized tools. All right, so let's get to it and show you what we're going to do today. All right, first thing I want to do is I know, go through some of the various tips that are available uh, for your ramrod. We got your basic threaded tip that goes on the back end here. This one's uh, threaded 832. You can get uh, 1032 as well. This one's a 5 16th. They got them 3 8 and 7 16th as well. And you can get them in brass or steel. Either one. Uh, these are real great, uh, especially in the 5 16th size, to put the bottom end of your ramrod so that uh, you can uh, feed it into the stock. And generally, that's what you'll find on the uh, original guns is the metal tips will be down inside the gun and it'll be just the wood tip sticking out on the uh, front end that's used to push the bullet down with uh, the larger end. That's done mostly, basically because even brass will scratch up the bore in time and the wood tip, just a plain rod, is best for loading your gun. All right. Another one we got is the flared one and this is used uh, of course on Fowlers, blunderbusses, things like that where you need a larger tip. Uh, these are very common on muskets, uh, early smooth bores. Uh, you'll see them put on in various ways. This one's just a simple uh, taper down your ramrod to slip in and then pin it of course. And that's the way all of these are done. You, generally you can put glue in these if you want, if it's, especially if it's a loose fit that you got on it on the rod. Uh, but usually just a pin through the back end here and I'll show you how to do that. Some of the others we've got are kind of cool. This one's got a jag tip on it. Uh, you put this on the upper end of the rod, of course, because this is not going to go down in your stock very well. But the neat thing about this one is you unscrew it and you got a ball puller. And not the most effective way. These things uh, have a problem in that, first of all, getting this into the ball means forcing it in. And on a lead, soft lead ball, it's actually going to expand the ball slightly and make it a tighter fit in the barrel so it's going to be more difficult to even pull the ball with that. Uh, so what they've come up with um, the Hawkins shop comes up with this neat little gizmo here. This one fits on the upper end of your rod and screw the tip and yes it's got a ball puller like this one on it but you flip this around and you got a drill. So you can drill a slight pilot hole in the ball first then flip it around and use the ball puller. And to make it even handier you have a four inch uh, extension here that you can thread onto the bottom end of this. Well, excuse me, this goes into your ramrod. This would screw on the back end for your extension rod puller goes on the end of that. So you've got a all multi-purpose device here. So it's kind of cool. So you've got to drill your hole first with this tip. Just, you know, hand turn it until you get a slight hole in there. Flip it around. Use your ball puller. you got your extension here for cleaning or for pulling balls. Pretty handy device. And like I said, these come from the Hawkins shop out west. Next one is, uh, this one actually is an original and this one can work on either end of the rod depending on the size of your rod but this one's down around 5 16 diameter and it's got uh, just knurls on here. It's not really a jag as such so what it is is that you can unscrew it and it's got a ball puller as well. And I'll see that used on a lot of shotguns. 
and this is another original here typical shotgun style that would be pinned in place of course and you flip this around and you got a wad puller now unfortunately one of the tines is broken off of this it would have two tines rotating together similar to these for pulling wads out of a shotgun this is not for pulling a lead ball this will not grip the ball and it will just break the tines off which is probably what happened here this type is for pulling the wads out of a shotgun and this is another modern one here same thing used for pulling wads out of a shotgun modern threads on it this one's 832 you can get them 1032 as well here's a ball puller here and these were issued with muskets and rifles uh, this one is a modern made reproduction and threads could be better I would cut these a little deeper and put a, a better tip on the uh, end of the threads here so that it would grip a little better and of course these other three here on the bench are for pulling wads too and they would attach to the end of your rod and this one is one that's uh, available from Jim Chambers right now uh, this one is kind of cool it's a it's a longer two inch long tapered threaded on the small end and fits about a 5 16 rod on this end and of course you would pin this in place and being tapered as it is it fits down in your rod, in your, uh, rod channel very uh, cleanly and quickly uh, so it guides itself in and this is very very similar to what I see in a lot of originals and you can get these from uh, like I said Jim Chambers Flintlocks sells these they may not be on his website you just have to ask him for them and I think they run about four dollars a piece and he only has them in steel which is the most common all right so let's get to some of the tools you might want to use I've got a section of rod here that we can put tips on and show you how it's done and first of all I want to show you some of the specialized tools so let me back up just a little bit here yep, wrong way and this is for tenoning uh, chairs chair rails and chair rungs um, I don't know if you can still get these things I bought this many years ago from Michael Lee and it's a really really handy device if you're going to do a lot of ramrods what you do then is put your ramrod in bring it up to the depth that you want to cut tighten the device down and it's got a blade here and a stop and the stop is adjustable for whatever diameter you need to cut and it's spring loaded on the back side here so we tighten the spring up and that brings the blade up against the side of the dowel and then by turning this it just shaves down to the diameter to where you have the stop set at so now you've got turn down to fit we need to go a little bit more and that's the nice thing about this you can adjust it several times until this fits on tightly should fit tighter than that I got a little too much cut off but that gets you your basic cut off and it gives a nice clean cut around the base here uh, which is what you want when you're doing a ramrod and then of course this would be put on and pinned in place another specialized tool I have is basically called a buggy whip plane and these are available from Mike Lee I think he's producing these now he's got a patent on them and they're pretty cool um, they come with a blade set up here you can see the hole here at the ramrod would, or the dowel would go into and just like a plane as this rotates it's going to actually shave bits of, met of wood off the top of this and it even comes with an extra blade on the back side and he's got various stops for these for whatever diameter you want this one's 5 16 and you know if you're doing a tapered rod that would be the minimum size and then you kind of just 
release pressure on this and as this piece goes up it's increasing that diameter and I will show you how this is used. You can use this in two ways. One is you can have somebody with a, a, a drill chuck this thing and start spinning it for you and you run it along planing down the rod to the diameter you want. I find it's a lot easier and more controllable if I do it in a wood lathe and I will show you that here in just a few minutes. Now here I've got a rod that I've already done some of that too. I put one of Jim Chambers tips on it and I haven't pinned it yet but I've also run this through uh, the lathe with the buggy whip plane and got a nice taper on it and it's nice and close. The final aspect of this since I can only go up so far with the, the buggy whip plane in my lathe is I've got to finish this off by hand and I will show you how that is done too. So let me go to the lathe first and we'll show you how we turn some of these tips and get these tapered rods going. Show you how this buggy whip tool works. Alright, so hang on. Next thing I want to show you is um, how you can straighten a ramrod. A lot of the dowels that you get nowadays, uh, even though they're good hickory and they're straight grain, they might have a, a warp to them. And, uh, this one's got a little bit of one. You can probably see it there. It's so I want to show you how to take these out. And you can take out a pretty terrible warp uh, by using this method. So let me show you that. Let me get the camera set up here. What we're going to use is a propane torch, which I've got right here. And what you want to do is find that spot, and you can even lay it on your bench top, whatever you want to do. Find out where that warp is, put it on the underside so that the warp is going this way, okay? And on the torch, and flex it in the opposite direction that that warp is. And then move it back and forth across the heat of the flame, not in the flame, but in the heat of it. And what you want to do is dry out that side and then check it. You may scorch it a little bit like I did here. That's okay because you're going to be sanding and working this down. You do your straightening before you do the tapering. Keep checking. Keep eating. Bend it too far, which I have done. Got the reverse curve in it. You can do it back the other way. All right. Just that short of time, you can see we got this one. Hard for you guys to see, but it's pretty straight right now. Straight enough to start tapering and work it down. Alright, I've got the uh, ramrod set up here in the wood lathe. It goes through my uh, tailstock just fine. And I've got a, uh, a four jaw chuck threaded on here to hold it tightly. You can see that right there, four jaw chuck. And what we're going to do is We are going to turn this a little bit. I've got a live tailstock on it. I need to back off a little bit. I'm going to feed this on. Bring it back up. You don't want to over tighten this or it will flex the rod too much. You just want it to just touch the ramrod tip. Lock it in place. And I start up here at the top end. See if I can zoom in for you here. And when I 
turn this on just be careful because it's going to start off pretty fast. And then you're just going to start shaving this off. Just put a little pressure on the back end of the jaw here. point if you want to you can get some coarse sandpaper or a piece of a one inch wide belt and run it back and forth sanding this as you do take a little bit more off got this 5 16 block under here but you can see that it's not under there tight because I want a little bit of sanding room but I keep that block under there to keep me from going too shallow far as you can on the machine. Uh, let me adjust this a little bit. So I, I went all the way up to the end here until I was hitting the uh, headstock. Put it back in now. Let me go grab a piece of sandpaper. I got some uh, sanding belt here, and with this running, you can get in here. This is a 60 grit. It'll get you down pretty close. Take away all the cooling marks. close to finish and uh, I actually used a sacrificial tip here because you are going to hit it with the plane and with the sanding paper and it's going to make a deeper mark in it than what you want to, uh, in the finish so this one is just put on temporarily pull it off put the final one on and pin it 
So let's go ahead back to the bench now and I'll show you how we can finish shaping this out. Alright, now what I want to do is show you how to put on a, a ramrod tip uh, by hand, not using any fancy tools or anything. Uh, and in this case, what you're going to need is a piece of tape and a sharp knife of some sort. So we got my knife, got the ramrod. Got my piece of tape, and just mark your tip of your ramrod. However far down you want to go, put a light mark on there, and then wrap a piece of tape around it at that mark. And let me zoom in here so you can see closer what I'm doing. What we're going to do is, any sharp knife works, but you just want to roll it back and forth, sort of cutting a notch in with the blade. press down fairly hard. That's why I'm doing this on something that if something slips that's not going to catch my hand. Then just take your knife and start going back. Just like carving it away down to that not your meat. You may have to go back and cut that again, which will help remove any of that waste that you're doing. The trick is just having patience to get it down deep enough. Now you don't want to go all the way to the diameter that you need right away. You'll finish that off with a file. You can hear the knife hit that notch I scored in there. sure there's a good definition between the two diameters right now. Then I'll go back and just like whittling, carve it off. And get this so you can see it here. doing is just pulling it up, cutting a strip off. So you got it down somewhat and you can go back and uh, re-notch that, cut down shave away. You'll have to do that maybe two or three times till you get to the diameter that you want. Then the next thing you'll do is uh, I've got a piece of wood here. It's got a notch cut in it. You can see that just a piece of a gun stock with a ramrod channel cut in it. And take a, a good file, 
I prefer one that doesn't have any teeth on the edge, uh, what they call a safe file. And just lay your ramrod in there, and with that safe edge up against your tape, you can start taking that down. You might angle it a little bit to uh, sort of cut towards the tape more. Trying to keep a close angle so you guys can see this here. So you sort of work it down first to close to the diameter that you want. And as you rotate the file, and I start working the tip a little bit more, getting a slight taper out because I know this is still going to be too big towards the back end that's the tip I want hang on now we're going for a 5 8 inch tip here so get it so that the tip that you're working just starts to accept that brass tip on there now the real trick to this is just trying to cut all the sides evenly so that your tip goes on centered all right we're getting pretty close now I'll start working back Bringing the whole piece down to the level that's at the front of the tip. Check it occasionally. drive it on that last little bit. Making sure that the joint between the two diameters is good and clean. That's why a safe edge works good to start with, but this one actually has teeth on the edge so I can sort of push towards the back and clean up the variances between the two. Pretty close, just a little bit more. on about halfway until it gets tight. And I'm going to take a mallet now. And we're going to drive it on that last little bit. pretty good fit there. You don't want any gaps between the wood and the brass tip here. If you do, put this in a vise, wiggle the rod off because it won't be able to pull it straight off. The best thing to do is hold this in a vise with something to pad it, a piece of leather, and then wiggle your rod, pulling back at the same time and it will slip out of that tip. And then clean up your joint a little bit better 
drive it back in place. And if you're really fussy about things, you can soot the tip of the uh, ramrod tip and when you drive it on, it'll leave a black spot wherever it's too high and just take it down. But you don't need it great. I mean, as long as you can't get a thumbnail between the wood and the uh, tip, then you're doing okay. And sorry about the uh, trying to stay in the frame here. I want to make sure you guys see this is kind of a small object. Let me get in front of here. There we go. So there's a go. Good old autofocus. Come on. There you go. Now you can see a good tip put on there. Then it's just a matter of tapering it down to the diameter of the tip. Alright. So that's how you do it by hand. Of course this would be uh, drilled and pinned for a 16th inch pin and secured in place. If you do go a little too large with the uh, filing and it seems a little loose, uh, put, you know, put a little epoxy in the tip before you jam it on. Let that dry, then pin it. But uh, I don't like doing that because you know, just take your time. You got a good fit to begin with. You won't need to use any filler in there to help take up the gaps. All right, so on to the next project. All right, what we're going to do now to finish up this rod is I've got a piece of uh, scrap wood here. This is maple. And I've put a V-channel down the center of it on the uh, shaper table. And you want something that's pretty flat, uniform all the way down. And at the back end, I've got a block of wood put on here so that ramrod will fit into a recess and hold the back end down while I'm doing the final work on it. Hold it in your vise. And I've actually got a, a supporting vise, a support block right here in the center to help hold that up nice and even. Then what we do is simply take it, lay it in here, got the tip still on it, and we want to start smoothing this down and getting it tapered properly. And I've got a uh, fairly new bastard file here for metal. And this works pretty good on doing this since you're pretty close to final shape. You go in here and just start working it. Getting out any scatter marks, sanding marks. channel will help keep it in place and my left hand is actually turning it at the upper end so you try and work all the uh, diameter equally as you work along. And at this point you also want to go back and check it on the gun you're fitting. I happen to have a gun here that I need a ramrod for. So I will simply put it in place and check the fit. And wherever it's tight, you can mark it with a pencil. You can see this one's going in pretty far right now. It's almost down to the entry thimble. Another good way to do the ramrod is start at the entry thimble. Let's see if I can hold this to show you. Instead of worrying about the upper two thimbles, just put your ramrod in the lower thimble, bypassing the other two, and that'll get you so that your fit goes down in the wood. You can hear that. It hit the bottom. It's hitting the uh, pin on the other underside of the trigger guard. So that knows that tells me what the full length is going to be, and I can mark the upper end here. Uh, as to how deep it needs to go and then start fitting it into the other two thimbles. That's a pretty good fit in there. You want it tight now because your final sanding is going to take it down a little bit more. And you do want a friction fit in these. Now I know that I need to work up in here where I did not use the plane on it. 
uh, so it's not going through the upper thimbles well. So I'll just keep working that down. Turning it as I work along. Now, should be doing it this way. And once you get the paper the way you want from end to end, that's when you go back with your sanding block. And I've got a sanding block that uses that same paper I was using earlier. And this is just a little homemade device. I put a screw through it. It's got a couple of pins on either end here that I can fold the uh, belt around, place it in place, clamp this down. It's got corresponding holes on the other end and I do have a locating mark here so I know which end is up. And then when I tighten it down, of course, it holds that piece of belting in place. And I usually keep a, a layer or two on there to sort of pad it. This one's got uh, three layers right now. And you just start working the same way, just back and forth. And having something that's at least six inches long will give you a nice flat surface. Once you've done that, you may be about ready to use it, but you can also take an, another piece of paper, make sure it's good and round by simply wrapping the paper around it, like that, and sliding up and down. Use a little bit finer paper each time. you get a nice smooth finish from end to end like that one. Then I, at this point it's fitted to the gun. I'll go ahead and swap this tip out for the one that I'm going to stay with, pin it in. And if you're going to do an upper one you go ahead and cut that like I have here and pin on the upper one if you want. Of course cutting it to length as you go along. So that's really all it is. Then it's just a matter of staining any way you want to. Uh, I usually like a lighter color. Most of the original ramrods I see were uh, pretty light colored in comparison. I think in most cases if they were stained, they were stained very lightly. Um, I think a, a lot of them though were probably just left natural and given an oil finish and they just kind of got darker and dirtier with age and use. So you can go either way. I like a little bit of color so I use uh, Laurel Mountain. Uh, honey, maple. So that's what I use there the Laurel Mountain Antique Wood Stain Honey Maple. And that gives it a nice light color. And then put a gunstock finish on there of your choice or oil it. Uh, linseed oil, boiled linseed oil works good. Uh, there's a lot of talk about old timers would soak these in kerosene for about a year and you could actually almost double them in half and yeah yeah you can do that but who wants to wait a year for their ramrod to soak so I don't worry too much about that there's enough flexibility in these that I'm not too worried about breaking it if you use it properly the rule of thumb is never use one hand to ram the ramrod down the, the gun barrel always use short strokes two hands holding the gun between your knees or under your arm and that way you won't have any breakage and you also want to check your ramrod make sure it's got a good straight grain running through it if the grain runs out the side somewhere yeah it's going to split pretty easily right there and if you're not careful when it splits and you're pushing it down you can jam that right through your hand and I've seen that happen on the range way too many times so use, use good straight hickory and take your time, make your ramrod, check it off into the fit on the gun, make it a tight fit until you do your final sanding, and then when you stain and finish, it should fit in fine.
you don't want it sliding out when you fire the gun and you don't want it so that when the humidity gets high like it is today uh, it's about 94 degrees feels like 103 out there um, you don't want it swelling up and sticking in your gun too so it's a very close tolerance in there for the ramrod to the fit of the gun so that's pretty much it uh, not a lot to it not a lot to know it's a matter of just deciding what you want to use in the way of tips use a good straight piece of hickory and take your time fitting it to the gun stock uh, might take you two or three hours might take you a little longer just depends on you know how cautious you are as you work along but it's not a difficult chore to do uh, don't use ramrods or, or dowels that you find at the hardware store uh, those are made out of a foreign hardwood of some sort. Uh, I believe they call it ramen, R-A-M-I-N, and uh, it's not strong enough. Use a good hickory ramrod, and you can get those from Track of the Wolf, Muzzleload and Builder Supply, uh, Wayne Dunlap. Uh, a lot of people sell good hickory ones. Um, I, I went ahead and I went ahead and went to a dowel company and had them specially make hundred of each size that I needed so that'll last me a little while so until the next time you guys take care uh, uh, if you've got any suggestions uh, about things you would like to see let me know and I will try and do them as I work along uh, this ramrod I'm making for this gun is the last thing and I got to ship this gun out to a customer uh, then I got some more uh, trade gun kits I got to run on the stock duplicator and I'll need rods for those too so it's a constant process here always making something y'all take care and I'll see you next time well all that talk about ramrods and I forgot to show you how to pin one on so I'm going to do a little addendum here and uh, show you how to properly pin a tip onto a ramrod. Alright, let me get set up for that and I'll show you how to do it properly. Alright, so you got your ramrod tip installed and you're pretty happy with it. Uh, now you want to pin it on. And you know you've only got a certain length of wood inside so I generally go fairly close to the bottom not so close that it causes any splitting of course but the first thing you do is punch a center mark on this and it's a little tricky because of being round I'm trying to hold the darn thing so once you got the center mark Take your drill, put a sixteenth inch bit in it, and you want to drill that all the way through both sides. Grab yourself your quarter uh, countersink, and I don't chuck this because I just want a real fine countersink on both sides. So I just do it by hand until I get a little bit of chamfer on the hole. piece of 16th inch pin rod and what I use is uh, go down to your local welding supply shop uh, we have an arcette here in town and I buy 16th inch welding rod it's copper coated which is nice it helps keep it from uh, rusting so much later in time and you just take a piece of that stick it through and I've got it so there's maybe I don't know a little less than a sixteenth sticking out on the bottom side nip it off and 
I like to smooth off those nipped edges so I get a flat surface. The next thing you want to do now is take your ball peen hammer and having it set on a hard surface go ahead and start peening the end of that rod over I do a little bit on one side, a little bit on the other and you want to make sure that the rod is level so that the pin is hitting and you're not forcing the pin through again feel it when you're getting a good solid hit. Finish it off. <coughs> Excuse me. And I like to uh, dress it up a little bit. Take everything down nice and smooth. So that's pretty much it. And you can dress this off further if you want. You know, sand it, file it, whatever you want to do to smooth it up. But basically the pin should almost disappear. This one's still a little proud. You can feel it. got it. So that's how you pin on a ramrod tip. Not much to it. Alright, so until the next time, stay safe out there and I'll see you later.